Greetings from Goblin Valley, Nisedal, Norway. I'm here, so you don't have to be. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Guvad RDA from Wendy Wape. It's a 24mm single coil RDA and it's rather cheap and it's rather good. Well, I thought it was one of the best, but I haven't used it for, for a while and I have several of them. I was really enthusiastic about them before I started understanding airflow and how it really works. And since then, since I've learned how to place my coils uh, perfectly, <laughs> to my taste at least, in a lot of RDAs, the Govad has uh, fallen through. And the problem with it is I can't seem to get cooling on the top of my coils. And I've put this off for far, <laughs> far too long. And I think I have a solution that works okay-ish. And I'm going to uh, draw some drawings for you. And we will look at the problem and analyze it and uh, see how we can make it at least better. Let's go to close up. Let's first have a look at uh, the parts. The drip tip, the upper part of the barrel, the lower part of the barrel, and you can adjust the um, airflow here and when this is on top you can also adjust the airflow coming in deep from the side and up through the middle of it because the govad has air coming in from this um, hole in the center through these gaps like uh, like your ordinary kennedy uh, style uh, air is coming straight up here and air is also coming in from the sides here. As you know, I'm uh, really uh, concerned about how much air you get into your RDAs. And uh, the best one yet uh, is the Wasp Nano with a total of 30 square millimeters of openings into the RDA. This one has 45. Uh, <coughs> the center hole, it's not uh, very big, but you get uh, about uh, 12 square millimeters from that one, and the rest is delivered from the side openings. There is one thing that is really important here, and that is all the air comes in under the coil. All the openings and the center hole comes in under your coil. That's one thing. The other is that this distance from here to here, that is how long coil a coil can you make? And the answer is not very much. It's about seven millimeters. You have to keep your coils short. And this gap is also big almost a centimeter or uh, nine millimeter, 8.9 millimeters to be exact. That indicates that uh, your coils should be short with a big diameter. But one of the problems here is the angle of the air holes because the air is coming in like so and like so. So you have this angle in here and this angle in here hitting the center airflow. And that is a big, big mistake from uh, Van de Wape. Let's go to a drawing. Here you see my clumsy attempt at a, a drawing. Uh, there's no need to use a, a um, uh, uh, exact scaled schematics for this. To understand it, we only need to know that the air holes coming in at an angle like so, 
and that this is the air path and that it is hitting the center hole like so. If you look through one of these holes from this side, you get this view. This is the center air hole coming with air up and this is one of these air holes. So you see this part of air is hitting the flow coming up from the center air hole. In a side uh, uh, view you get this situation. Some air is hitting this part and some air is interfering with the flow coming up here. Now having studied airflow and a lot of collision of air I know that this will happen. When the two air streams from opposite sides collide at this angle you will get a small turbulence this way that will spread out like so. But most of this air is pushed into the center of the center airflow. It's a simple question of, of vector and I've seen this in my, my airflow chamber. In addition to that, some of the air here is directly hitting the airflow too. So all of this is very disturbed. Luckily in the Gubad you have the ability to close down the side vents or the center air hole, the flow into the center. So if you block this part, half of this opening, you block also half of this opening, half of this opening and half of this opening, reducing them like so. Now this is very important because now the air is missing the center airflow and because this air that is now all of it is going to hit the center airflow but they collide here right and they collide here this is where the collision happens now and the turbulence is mainly going this way and missing the center air hole. In addition you get because this air is breaking up that stream of air you have very little collision into the center airflow too. So by closing it halfway like this, this opening, you get two of them will block, let me focus back again, will block and go straight and missing the center air hole, like so. The other two, it looks like it will hit this directly. But thanks to the collision happening here, they interfere with the center airflow much, much less. Let's look at the side view again. Now, if the air comes in from the sides and ruins the direct flow towards the underside of your coil, you only get turbulence, directional turbulence, yes, but not a direct flow like if these are blocked 
But if these are blocked, you only get uh, have an opening total of air that is only 12, uh, 10, 10 square millimeters, 10 to 12 square millimeters, and that is much uh, too little air to cool the coil anyway. So you want both. And we have seen that if you have a high pressure here now, because when you suck, you evacuate the whole chamber. The air coming in from the sides, because they, there is low pressure here, will build up pressure here. And because there is high pressure here and low pressure up here now, the air will uh, go like so, like I've shown in my airflow in single coil RDA's uh, video. And we have seen in that video that this air does not follow the coil around. It goes out like this, fan-shaped. Now if we limit the, the, the air like I showed in the previous drawing, so that it does not hit the center flow directly, we now get the desired Kuanda flow around the coil. And this is very much desired. The uh, turbulence uh, flow going up will cool uh, the underside mostly and the sides uh, that is not hit by the dis this direct flow. So suddenly we have a nice mixture of air and vapor here and we achieve a cooling around the whole, whole coil. But to achieve this effect <clears throat> to have uh, a direct directional uh, turbulence, we need to be build a, a bigger coil. We need to have this space on the side of the coil being not more than two millimeters. One and a half millimeter is preferable. That means an outer diameter of six millimeters. I will not built, uh, 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 because I use flat wire, I will not uh, use a 6 millimeter bit, but I will use a 5. So uh, let's uh, build a coil and uh, place it. I have gotten a lot of questions lately about my, uh, my coils. Um, I use uh, standard 22 gauge cancel and I hammer the portion that's going to be the coil and I leave uh, the uh, legs of the coil uh, unhammered and unflattened. Because uh, when the wire gets this wide, uh, sometimes it's problematic to, to make them uh, fit in the screw holes. And sometimes it's just, uh, you know, um, it's, it's uh, being this flat, um, the screws might also destroy uh, the legs if they are so thin. So I keep the, the, um, the legs of the coil um, more or less uh, unhammered. And the coil, when it's finished, looks more or less like this. Now, because the main air is coming from the underside, oh, <laughs> all of the air is coming in from the underside, then make sure you place the th three wraps or the most wraps uh, with uh, the bottom down. Let's install it. As you can see, there is no uh, correct or wrong uh, position for the coil here. All uh, The air can never hit the coil directly in uh, this RDA, only the bottom airflow. And then we know uh, the height of the coil, it doesn't uh, matter at all. So something like this. And you know, it's always cool to see the flat wire coils uh, from the side like this because they are so thin. And when you turn it, it's a monster. <laughs> and as I said, um, have uh, the widest part of the coil on the underside and the uh, shortest on the upper upper side. And, um, it's now uh, 0 0.25 ohm and um, let's check it out. 
one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three. So two seconds. And that's nice at the 3.9 volts. If you use uh, the Muji cotton pads, use a piece that's um, about uh, three times uh, the diameter of the coil. So one and a half centimeter for a five millimeter coil, wick as hard as you can. Just make sure that the cotton touches the bottom. Don't overfill it with cotton and make sure you have a line of sight through your um, air holes. And um, yeah, I think we are good to go. Now I can truly say that the Gouvald from Wendy Wape is back on my menu. Now it performs like uh, the Wasp Nano. The Wasp has a bit more of the higher notes. Um, but uh, now this one compares to, to both the Aeronaut and the um, Carnage RDA in in single coil uh, setting and it's really really good and the problem with the spatter is gone now this is a single uh, uh, coil flat wire very flat wire and uh, this is at uh, 70 watts which is a, a lot of power for this uh, tiny coil and uh, there is almost no spatter at all. And you know, thick, lukewarm, so much flavor. Now, if we open the airflow, and now I know it will disturb the center direct uh, cooling airflow. And I get a lot more juice and um, backspit uh, in my mouth. Not pleasant at all because that juice is also hot. And by, by just dialing it down to a circular uh, hole. Perfect. Mission accomplished. Govad is back on the menu. Yeah.